for president of the United States. And I'm not running for second. I'm not running for second. Don't fall for this guy just because, oh, he's a black conservative. Okay, guys, I know what a lot of you guys are thinking because he's African American and you think, oh, this would be great. Mm, okay, don't think about the race card because you want to battle the race card with another race card. Don't do that. Think outside that box. Think outside of that collectivist mindset. Think of the individual. Think of an individual with good merits. Think of somebody like Ron Paul or Gary Johnson. Now, those are the only two candidates I can recommend. The others are bullcrap. I would say that based upon my experience of being on the board of the Fed, that we can fix the Fed. We don't need to end the Fed. If you end the Fed, that's throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Some people say that we ought to audit the Federal Reserve. Here's what I do know. The Federal Reserve already has so many internal audits, audits it's ridiculous. I don't know where, why people think we're going to learn this great amount of information by auditing the Federal Reserve. Uh, you talked a lot about the Constitution today at your speech. Can you specifically mention where in the Constitution it states that a private central bank like the Fed can issue America's uh, currency? It's not in the Constitution. It is in the fact that the United States Congress commissioned the Federal Reserve. In 2005 and 6, we were told by Kane that there's no housing bubble, the media just made this up because it doesn't like Republicans, and in, as late as 2006 and then beyond, he's telling us that the economy's fine, you know, the statistics look great. Despite all the experience you're running on in the business community, your time on the Fed, you missed the housing bubble and you missed the economic collapse. Well, it's real simple, Chuck. I have economic advisors working with me now who spend time studying these various analyses. When I wrote those papers, I was only responding to reports that I, like everybody else, was getting through the media. Those kind of public reports. I wouldn't. Which I turned out to be right, by the way. You were criticizing. Me. You were criticizing those reports, but they turned out to be right. Well, yeah, but what I'm saying is I'm going to have, I will have people around me who are going to help me do deeper analyses on some of these things, okay? I want to talk about any, Wall Street, anything, any one regulation that you think is stifling innovation. Elliot, I can't give you one innovation. I'm speaking generally, and you're trying to pin okay. me down well, on one. Now, I'll tell you what. You're running for president. I'll, I think it's fair to I'll, do. I'll make a deal with you. Okay. The next time I come, I will have a specific ah, one a for you, that's okay? That's a deal. Kentucky Fried. Cumbersome in the way. What did they find? Well, I'm asking you that. Do you know what they found? I don't know what they found. Did you look at the report? Because this is exactly what you just. I have not seen the report. Well, they called it down and they got business folks involved. Do you think they did an adequate job? I don't know because I haven't seen the report. Okay. But I have looked at the debt, co debt commission report and some okay. of the items that were in there. Okay, let's switch to that. Do you think they did a good job there? I think they identified a number of items, but they did produce a plan. I think it's a plan. I mean, I saw a plan that basically cut $4 trillion okay. over a 10-year period. Is that enough? No. How much should we cut this year? Elliot, I can't tell you how much we need to cut this year until I look at the programs well, in detail as a person who has access to all of the information. Okay, but, but wait a minute. You you see, said, see you, 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 Elliot, Elliot. You keep trying to pick a number, a rule, uh, an item, and right. make that the whole case. This is why we don't solve problems in Washington, no, D.C. No, 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 just so it's clear. I'm trying to actually solve problems by drilling down on right. facts and specifics. Right. Because generalities don't solve problems. I agree with Saying you. Saying you want to get rid of excess regulation sounds good, but doesn't mean anything if you can't tell me which one, Herman. So can, tell me which one. I will be able to tell you which ones, Elliot. I can't tell you which okay. ones right now. Okay. So let's... Uh, Mr. Romney... Good hair. Herman Cain supported Mitt Romney for president in 2008. He looked at this plastic man who will say whatever he thinks the boobs want him to say to get elected, and Herman Cain thought, that's my man. That should, red flags ought to be going up right about there. Or how about TARP? He supported the whole bailout regime of 2008, and he told us this was good economics, 
we got to get rid of all these free market purists, he called them. He said the Bush administration was giving us good information about the financial crisis, and so we needed this program. It's called the 999 plan. 999 says there are three taxes coming. One is the personal income tax, taking that down to 9%. That's progress. One is creating a value-added tax, Japanese-style value-added tax, to replace the corporate income tax. And one is a retail sales tax. All three of those taxes down the road could end up growing. They could become 10-10-10 or 10-10-12. Every value-added tax in Europe started small and grew. And when that value-added tax was added, it did not make the income tax go down. The income taxes grew also. I'm very concerned about three different taxes. Every one of them can grow. I admit I didn't know all of the details about those situations. Or why would you be more concerned about 999 growing than about the current income tax rates growing? Because if you take the present structure and, and chip it down like an ice sculpture, the top rate's 35 percent. Let's take it to 25. That doesn't change anything in terms of making it more likely to be increased. Uh, it doesn't create new uh, possibilities for growth. Look, I applaud Herman Cain's statement, the present system is too high, it's too re redistributionist, it moves money from one side to another, let's take rates radically down, let's end this double and triple taxation of savings. But the way he does it creates these new taxes, like a VAT and a retail sales tax, that have a dangerous history of growing. Now let's look at the actual details of Herman Cain's 999 plan. You know, the real problem with the 999 plan is that Herman Cain has a fourth nine hidden up his sleeve. And eventually that nine is going to fall out. And when he does, I think a lot of people are going to accuse Mr. Cain of cheating. Now, we all know that didn't go over too well in those Western movies. I don't think it's going to go over any better in the presidential campaign. Now, what am I talking about with this fourth nine? Well, Herman Cain's plan according to Mr. Cain, replaces the current tax system with a 9% personal flat rate income tax, a 9% corporate tax, and a 9% national sales tax. Those are the three nines. But the fourth nine, one that Herman Cain is not mentioning, is a brand new 9% payroll tax. Now, uh, uh, Cain is claiming that his current plan eliminates the 15.4% payroll tax that exists today. And it does. But it doesn't eliminate it completely. It merely replaces it with the 9% tax. And when Herman Cain is arguing that his plan doesn't raise taxes on a lot of low or moderate income earners, it's based on the elimination of the 15.4% payroll tax. But when you factor in the the, the fact that the tax is not eliminated, but rather simply replaced with a lower payroll tax, you get a whole new situation. As a matter of fact, a lot of the people that Herman Cain is claiming are going to get a tax cut under this new plan actually receive a tax increase. Free at last! Free at last! Thank God Almighty! Now, if Herman Cain really wants the 9999 plan to be a 999 plan, then he has to allow corporations to deduct from their own income taxes the wages that they pay to their employees. As it stands right now, there is no deduction allowed uh, for wages and salaries. That is where the hidden 9% payroll tax comes from. Of course, if he does that, it's not going to be revenue neutral. He's going to blow a hole in the deficit. The only way to really have a 999 plan that reduces taxes the way Herman Cain is proposing is if we also cut government spending. If we really want to combine uh, a tax reform with tax reduction, it can only be done if we reduce the size of government. And that's one thing that Herman Cain is not talking about, the need to shrink the size of federal government. You're not going to pin me on that, okay? okay. I'm right. not going to answer okay. that question. Okay. Well, Neil, have you ever heard the old expression, the tiger in the tall grass, just sort of wait? Do they think that for the last nine months I have not been studying the foreign policy challenges that we face? Do they think for the last nine months I have not been consulting 
with a group of foreign policy advisors about all of the different situations that we are in? Do they think for a moment that I'm not a student of the position that I see and that I probably know more about foreign policy than they think? So my, what I'm going to say, Neil, is I hope they continue to think that I am foreign policy dumb until the right time they will find out I'm not as foreign policy dumb as they think. And when they ask me who's the president of you, Becky, 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 Stan, Stan, I'm going to say, you know, I don't know. Do you know? Where do you stand on the right of return? The right of return? The right of return? The Palestinian right of return. You're running for president after almost 10 years in Afghanistan. You, you don't have your own plan yet about what you would do in Afghanistan? No, because it's not clear what the mission is. We're told that Herman Cain can't tell us what his Afghanistan policy will be until he takes office. Well, you know, that's like a teensy-weensy bit of a problem there. Or what about the Patriot Act? We're told by Herman Cain that 90% of the Patriot Act is right on. And that the other 10%, he can't actually delineate to us what that is. But, sir, how would you define winning in Afghanistan right now as you're looking at it as a candidate? My point is the experts and their ad advice and their input would be the basis for me making that decision. I'm not privy to a lot of confidential information since I'm not in government and I'm not in administration. One of the things that I've always prided myself on is making an informed decision based upon knowing all of the facts. And at this point, I don't know all of the facts. I can tell you my approach to foreign policy. No, I don't have all the answers. Because a leader doesn't have to have all of the answers. A leader is supposed to know the right questions to ask of the right people. So, Would you describe yourself as a neoconservative then? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by neoconservative. I am a conservative, yes. Uh, neoconservative labels sometimes will put you in a box. I'm very conservative. But, but you're here. familiar with the neoconservative movement? I'm not familiar with the neoconservative movement. I told you I started out poor. <laughs> And I remember my brother and I sometimes, we would be coming home from school. We didn't tell the thugs which way we were going to come home. <laughs> that didn't make any sense. And if the thugs figured out which way my brother and I were going to come home, we'd have our books under our arm and our hands in our pocket. And we didn't take our hands out of our pocket because the thugs didn't know what we had in our pocket. That's how you deal with the enemy. Stop showing them your hand. That's my approach to foreign policy. They didn't know what we had in our pockets. And we just stood back with a smile on our face and said, jump if you feel froggish. That's my approach to foreign policy, folks. Do you think that's right, that NATO, the United States government, are backing former Al-Qaeda rebels in Libya? Obviously not, but I'm sure that there's more to it than that. I just got back from China. You ever heard of the Great Wall of China? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it looks pretty sturdy. And that sucker's real high. I think we can build one if we want to. We have put a man on the moon. We can build a fence. Imagine there's no pizza. And it'll be a 20 foot wall, barbed wire, electrified on the top, and on this side of the fence, I'd have that boat that President Obama talked about. <laughs> and I would put those alligators in that boat. And show them on the side. Pepperoni